Hey gang, wanted to uh, have a quick chat with you about uh, gaming today uh, and last night. Uh, last night I had an opportunity to play Level 7 uh, Omega Protocol, I think it's called. Really interesting game, it's one of those dungeon crawler type of games. Uh, the guy who uh, brought the title along uh, and swapped out some of the units and we, we used some other miniatures, I think which added a lot of flavor. To the game, one of the I, to me it was Space Hulk, but more involved, uh, and that's probably a disservice to the level seven system. But r r you've got tiles and you've got units and you move them around and the guys claw you and shoot at you, it's Space Hulk. But where it's cool is that you have to choose uh, some of your equipment to use. Uh, are you going to improve your marksmanship or are you going to have medical support? Are you going to have booby traps that you drop along the way? Uh, so your fit out is going to Im impact how you play the game uh, a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. And uh, so that, you know, that's two seconds for you to make some choices about, uh, about what you're doing. But then you have... Uh, a, a series of modes or stances that you adjust as you're playing the game. And each one of those modes or stances will uh, uh, change how much it costs for you to move and change the uh, how easy it is for you to be hit. And uh, I think also maybe the, not the amount of damage you take, but uh, this, it does something else as well. It makes it easier or harder to solve problems, right? So it's either, you're, either fight, you're either fighting or solving problems, right? So... Uh, and then, obviously, the, the the neat thing about the level seven game is that as you do things, you're you're uh, creating adrenaline uh, tokens, and every action you conduct, whether you're shooting or healing or moving, generates adrenaline tokens. And at the end of your turn, those adrenaline tokens go over to the game master, who then accumulates all those tokens from all of the players. And then he buys his bad guys and activities like uh, cave-ins from the ceiling and things like that to screw with you. Uh, so the more you do, the more you get hurt, the longer it takes you to get through the, the, the maze, the longer, the, the more stuff he gets to do to you and the intensity uh, just kind of ratchets up because there's a trigger in there that will make something happen. I forget what it was. Anyway, I really enjoyed the game. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Got a little acrimonious because I kept getting left behind uh, while we were playing. And uh, then when I f finally was in an opportunity to help everybody, I chose not to. I was a dick. Uh, so that was uh, amusing in of itself. It was amusing for me anyway. We did lose on the very first scenario of Level 7 Make Protocol. And I don't think that's actually possible. Well, we did manage to do it. And I'd like to say that it was all my fault. Uh so there was that, and then, whoops, and then yes, uh, today we played uh, our sixth or seventh session of uh, Angola. And yet again, the communists didn't win. And in fact, you know, if we were going to be super, uh, uber, hypercritical, we would say, what the freaking hell, the game's broken, the communists can never win in a four-player game. And it's easy to win in a three-player game because one person's running the communists and they can control and coordinate. But uh, what we found was that uh, the MPL, I think it's the MPLA, the yellow guys, uh, are just kind of uh, the poor man's, excuse me, the poor man's army and really struggle to uh, have a meaningful role. Excuse me. Shouldn't have eaten chips today. Uh, so, uh, what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that we had a really, really good rip roar in time, and it is still, <clears throat> despite that flaw, that despite that issue with the communists not being able to win that game so far, uh, we all sat around and said, A, we had a good time, B, we enjoyed it. We never, at any one time, we never, no one ever really felt like it was a slam dunk and we were going to win until the very last turn that we were playing, which wasn't the last turn of the game, but it was the last turn. Uh, it wasn't the last turn of the game, it was the last turn of the particular game, but it wasn't the last turn of the turn cycle. Fuck, I can't, I really am doing a crappy job of talking tonight. 
I'm fried. So, uh, really good game. Very close, very tense. Uh, it, very different game from any of the others that we've played. Uh, there's this wonderful uh, system of uh, random uh, placement of ownership of towns when you start, and you get to put forces in those towns. So theoretically, every game can be different or slightly different from every other game. And in this game, it was very different because the Compass actually controlled the entire middle of the map and, and controlled one or two uh, very key junctions. And that really drove the gameplay uh, very heavily uh, in the first four turns. And you know, Luanda in this game is important for uh, the FPLA, the red faction for the communists. They have to keep that. They never were in, at, were in any risk of losing that. But uh, Nova Lisboa is another junction in the southern half of the map. Uh, it's a major city. That changed hands probably five times in the game. It's you know, fraught with... Uh, death and mayhem and artillery and tanks and aircraft and all sorts of craziness and it swapped hands many times and victory points went backwards and forwards many times and uh, what the net result of all that was that excuse me that the South African UNITA uh, UNITA forces ground away uh, at the MPLA the yellow forces uh, from the communists and in the end uh, as the as the tide of forces rises in the in the game for the blue faction, uh, Unita, uh, they eventually had this overwhelming force, and they were able then to uh, definitively capture Nova Lisboa, and then uh, move up the coast of Angola and take uh, two or three major cities. And that all happened in one. Uh, it didn't all happen in one turn. That final series of actions all happened in one turn, combined with the the very late capture of uh, is it Lubinda or Cubinda? I forget what the name of the town is, but the town that's up in Zaire uh, that fell very late in the game as well. Uh, so it it and then it, it's got you know, this game has this fantastic auto victory situation where once you accumulate enough victory points in one turn that's more than your current victory point level boom uh, you um, or your 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 victory point position on the victory point track uh, once you accumulate more points in the game uh, in that turn than the than where you are on the track you win so that's what happens and so it's a very interesting cat and mouse game where you don't want to be winning by too much you don't want to be losing by too much and so you've got to play this game uh, really subtly and carefully until you have enough force in one moment in time to lunge and capture a lot of stuff the communists have that ability but I think they have that ability to do only in the early parts of the game which means unless they can really uh, strike out and capture an enormous amount of uh, area in the early game, they, they're going to struggle to win. So I think what uh, I think the conclusion we came to was that the yellow faction, which I believe is the MPLA, I would really hope I'm using the right uh, acronyms, but the yellow faction either needs uh, more forces, more major units as uh, as relief. Uh, coming from foreign aid or more uh, covert goods made available to them in some way, shape or form to aid their uh, their fight against the hordes of democracy. Really enjoyed the game. Once again, I think it was, like I said, either our sixth or seventh game play of uh, Angola from Multiman. It's on sale right now, 18 or 20% off. If you can get four people to play that game with you, I'd encourage you to get it. Like I said, I think it's probably the best four-player multi, the best four-player game war game I've played. It's probably the best multiplayer war game I've played. Uh, and by that multi, I mean more than two. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's it kills all this. You know, here I stand and crown of roses. And BS. It's way, way uh, more interesting 
and uh, ritual gaming experience as opposed to historical thematic experience. Uh, it's not card driven at all uh, from that perspective. It's not like that. It's different. And I'm going to stop there because I'm just going to ramble on about how much I like it and make you all confused. So have fun. Ciao.